Welcome to another Unity Advanced Game Dev tutorial. So I recently have been asked on how I created the Scrabis for one of my screenshots on Twitter. And so that is why today we are going to take a look at a simple splat map shader for blending together different textures. A splat map is a texture like every other texture, except that we do not use it for rendering, but for selecting the texture we want to render. So for example, the red areas here correspond to the rock cliffs, the green areas correspond to the lava flowing down and um, alpha is corresponding to the sand at the floor. And we can also blend and mix them together to create uh, transitions between these. There are essentially four reasons why you would want to use a splat map terrain instead of a normal terrain. Uh, the first reason is if you want overhangs or caves. This is not possible with the normal Unity terrain, but you can do it with a mesh, of course. The other reason is that you can rotate a mesh, which you cannot really do with a terrain. You can fake it with a terrain by adding terrain holes, but it's far easier to work with meshes in these cases. Another advantage of using Mesh geometry for world terrain is that you can add local details as much as you want. So you can uh, select a patch of the mesh and uh, subdivide it as much as you like to add detail. Another thing that is advantageous is that it is easy to use with external tools like Blender. And Blender is also the tool we are going to use today. Obviously the channel is called this way. And I will show you how to create a workflow with flat maps. So to recap how to create a volcano like this, you simply start with a plane, then you subdivide it a bunch of times uh, using proportional editing for large features, and then you go to sculpting mode and add some smaller details with the paintbrushes. Normally you would create UVs at this point, but I think uh, our plane UVs are good enough for our purposes for now. The next thing is to create the shader. Usually we would do this in Unity, but because we want to use the texture paint tools in Blender to create our splat map, we start creating it in the shader editor. And so essentially we're making this same shader twice, once for Blender and once for Unity to have a good workflow later on. So let's add a new material, call it Volcanic Island. And we will be adding five textures, four textures for the terrain itself, and one splat map, which we will paint on later. Quick side note, if you're in search for textures, you can go to MBNCG, which has public domain materials. This means you can use them in non-commercial as well as in commercial projects. So really check out that site. So I've chosen four textures for the volcanic island, and now we have to create a splat map which is a new texture and we increase the resolution a little bit so we have more detail on it. Now let's separate the color into its components. And each of our channels, red, green, blue and alpha, is a weight for how much texture we will add of our main chosen textures. So for example, if red is one, we will add 100% of the rock texture. And if alpha is one or zero, it depends on how you want to do it, then we add 100% of our ground texture. And in this way, we blend and combine them together. So we simply do what I have just said, which means we add a bunch of multiply and add nodes and put them eventually into the base color. 
So when we go back to our object now and enter viewport shading, uh, we can see the complete model is black right now, which is because we haven't painted actually anything yet onto the splat map. To start painting, we simply go to texture paint mode and select the splat map, very important. And then uh, any random color, preferably green, blue, red or alpha. And what you will start seeing now is if I paint green, I will paint the texture which is related to the color green in our shader. So in this case, green maps to the lava texture. So this would work reasonably well, but there's one problem, uh, which is when we start to paint a white color onto the model, which is then a combination of everything and uh, far too bright actually. This is because the weights are adding up uh, and are not normalized yet, which we will do now in the shader. The vector math node of Blender has a way to normalize vectors, uh, but only vector threes, and we have a vector four actually because we're using all colors, which means time for another time lapse. So it still looks kind of the same, which is because I'm using uh, very bright textures and very dark textures, but it's working correctly now. So the next thing we should do is to add some tiling to the base textures, not the splat map, to uh, add a little bit more detail. So to create tiling and offset, we add a UV map, then a value for our tiling, another value for our offset. We initially start our tiling with 1, which is the default, and we choose the UV map we already have. Then we multiply the UVs by the value by our tiling, and then we add an offset with an add node. And this result goes into the vector here. And if we change this value here now, we can see uh, the tiling is increased and we can add an offset as well. Now that the shader is complete, we just paint the model, which for you means another time lapse. So this is uh, good enough for now. Um, this is also all we have to do in Blender. The only thing we uh, are not allowed to forget is to save the texture to the asset folder of the Unity project. And now after importing the model, we create a new shader graph. It's a lit shader graph and call it Spot Map Shader. Open it up. So in principle, the thing we are going to do is the same as we did in Blender. Uh, the only difference is, is that we add normal textures, uh, but otherwise it behaves exactly the same. Which means for you, it is time for another time lapse. So here we are sampling our two textures, uh, the base texture and the normal texture, unpack it and multiply the strength also with a normal factor. Um, I'm going to take all these nodes and convert them to a subgraph, which we'll call split subgraph. All right.
So I made a small mistake in the video. Um, you have to first subtract alpha from one before you normalize. So you split up the colors, then you subtract, then you combine it again, and then you normalize, and then all the values are correct again. Now that the shader is done, we create a new material. Volcanic island material. And use our spot map shader and fill up the values. After assigning the textures and assigning the material to the object, it should look something like this. Uh, what we haven't done yet is the tiling at offset of each texture. Also, the smoothness factor needs to be taken account for. So, back to shader graph. After adjusting the values a little bit here, um, your object should look a little bit something like this. You will also notice that there are some issues with the transitions. It doesn't look as smooth as it does in Blender. This is because of color conversions, which we also can fix in the shader graph. So all we have to do is to add a color conversion node and go from RPG or sRPG to linear space and split up this again, add it here, remove this node and add alpha directly to world minus and now the transitions are a lot better. Another thing we should do is to multiply the texture color by a predefined color of our own so that the uh, different textures match together better. mistake. Alright. So this is our final spot map shader. There are some issues compared to a regular Unity Terrain. The first one being the performance. Uh, Unity Terrain can load automatically while uh, Mesh cannot. You can solve this problem in a very hacky way by dividing up the world into huge chunks and then load each chunk individually. Another problem is the amount of textures we can use. So each spat map maps to four textures. But if you want to use five textures, we need a second spat map. And there is a limit on how many textures you can use in a shader. Uh, and it depends on the graphics API and the platform. Unity solves this issue by adding multiple passes. But in a shader graph, you only have a single pass. You can export the shader graph into an HLSL file and add multiple passes yourself, but it is a little bit complicated. You can circumvent the issue a little bit by using texture to the arrays and indexing them correctly. You will, however, then have to simulate the behavior in your external tools and your external shaders as well. So summing up, you should use the split map technique uh, for smaller areas and not for huge worlds. Islands are a very good example for where splat maps are advantageous. So thanks for listening to this monologue about uh, the disadvantages of splat maps. Um, as always, thank you for watching and leave a like, leave a follow. Most importantly, buy my Unity assets. Uh, you can find the link to the store and a link to the project with the shaders and all and everything in the description and yeah, bye.